Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontide and the dewy eve. Waiting for the harvest and the time of reaping, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. All right, well, I uh, actually forgot to get a, an intro video at the beginning. So uh, here we are at the Hyde Park Fall Festival. Uh, it was definitely nice and busy today. We had a very, very good harvest and I feel extremely excited about it. I haven't even really tallied up the whole numbers, but believe me, the nets were, were getting pretty full. My name is uh, Willie. No, no, no. Okay, well I know you're somewhat familiar because you've taken this before. Yeah. <laughs> All right, cool. Now, what the Ten Commandments is, is that it's a, it's a ten, ten different rules that God gave us um, back in you know, many, many thousands of years ago. And what it is, is it's a law. And this law gives us an opportunity to examine ourselves so we can see what kind of people we are based on what God expects of us. Yeah. So just like a mirror doesn't change how you look, it just shows you how you look, right? Fair enough. You know, just like I, I woke up this morning, I looked in the mirror, it didn't change how my hair looked, it just showed me I needed to put a hat on. <laughs> Alright, so it's simple. Have you guys ever talked about Yes. Okay, now, what do you call some of your lives? Stealing is stealing. That's, that's the whole thing. So what do you, what do you call somebody who steals? Thief. Thief. All right. Thief. Thief. Have you guys ever used God's name carelessly as a curse word or Jesus' name as a curse word? Absolutely. Yeah? Yeah, what about you? Yeah, that, that's actually what it is. You're using it carelessly. You're using God's name carelessly. Now, do you know what you're doing when you do that? Okay, well, that's usually why people do it. What it is, the word, the word is called blasphemy. Let's go write that down. I'm sure you guys have never heard of it, right? Right? Okay. I always worry whenever people hesitate. That's why I'm looking at that. Because, like, God is looking at your, the intents of your heart. God is seeing, you know, if you have hatred in your heart, He's holding you accountable. And that's, that's the only reason I bring that up. Because, like, you may not have actually gone pow, pow, pow and killed someone. What do you guys have admitted to me? Liar. But yeah, so there's going to come a time when you're going to have to stand before God. You know, because like it's a it's appointed for every everyone to die once, and after that comes. You know, so there's going to come a time when we're all going to die eventually. You know, I mean, like let's face it, the mortality rate of humanity is 100 percent. Ten out of ten people die, right? You know, the two things you can't avoid. What are they? Death. 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 When we die, we're going to stand before God. thought that's ever entered into your mind, and every deed that you've performed in public and private. So even when you think no one else is looking, you got soft. So would you be innocent? Or would you be guilty if you stood before God's mind? Well, you know, even in a court, you know, somebody will try to plead innocent, but like once the, uh, the evidence is found... Oh, I'm guilty now. Yeah. <laughs> But like I said, you know, you, you admit it to these things. Even if you didn't admit to stealing, you still got, you still got, uh, you know, your other peoples to say, oh yeah, right. So we're talking about a place called hell. Hell is, is eternal. It means it has no end. It means it's a burning like a fire. It's a really scary place. It really is. It's no joke. Um, it's where people go when they when they commit a crime against you. So you think you're gonna end up there? If you were to die tonight, you got David Justice. Are you, are you worried? Is that worrying? Because it worries me too. It worries me just as much as it worries you. In fact, it probably worries me more than it worries you. Because I don't want to see anybody back to having you. I don't want to see anybody back to having you. That's why I'm out. You know? So, like, you can try. You can try to erase that. You see, you still see it, right? Why don't you try? Go ahead and try to erase all that the best you can. Yeah, try to, yeah use the eraser. Hey, yeah, really don't try, really try. That's still there. You still, you still got quite a mess. 
time. Well, you still got the mess. It's still the evidence of it. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. The wind, the wind's blowing even worse. Than I'm going over here. <laughs> Keep your eye on him. <laughs> All right, so even though you tried, you tried really hard, but the thing is, you can still see it. I can see the ass. Yeah? Oh, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, you can still see that. Yeah, you can still see it. Yeah, absolutely. And you were out of breath. You were trying your hardest. So you can say you tried your best to get rid of this set, right? But it didn't go away. So now, I gotta point out that there's something bigger that's required. Going up oh. <laughs> so Skylar, how would you like to have a clean slate? Yeah. You want a clean slate, right? I'm clean. Now, this is something that you weren't able to do on your own. It took something much greater than yourself to have this clean slate, right? Do you want to know what God did for you so you can have this clean slate? I mean, yes, I do. So, here's the thing. God, in all of his mercy, he said, you know what? I love Skyler way too much to let him go. So, God came down as Jesus Christ. Did you remember Jesus? Yeah. So, Jesus is God coming down to live as a substitute for you. Jesus was like a substitute for you. But he lived a perfect life without doing anything bad like this. And he said, okay, God, I am going to take Skylar's punishment in his place. Because I love Skylar so much that I will take the punishment. I will take that horrible punishment that Skylar has to have because he's sick. So I'm going to go ahead and take that sin away from him. Right? Does that make sense? So Jesus died on the cross. Like, he actually went to a cross and he died for you in mind because he loves you that much and because your sin is that serious. And even if you were the only person left in the world, God still loves you, loves you enough to say, I'm going to send Jesus to die on the cross for your sin. Because he loves you. So that way, you can have this clean slate. So, what God wants you to do is he wants you to trust in Jesus. So if you really trust in Jesus, you can get to know Jesus. Because if you trust in Jesus and you pay the price, you're going to want to get to know him. You're going to want to thank him. Yeah? And so, you know, you Jesus to come into your life and give you a new heart. He will give you, will give you everything you need to serve him and to love him. And that's what it means to be born again. You ever heard that term, being born again? I've got a brand new body just for you. Okay? I'll get rid of that one here. I'll get rid of that one here. I'll get rid of that one here. I'm going to write, write your name in it. Actually, I'm just going to write the date. Here's also one for Walter. I know he had to leave. Oh, you already got one? So I'll tell you what, just keep it. It's, it's a free gift. Alright? Angela, it was nice to meet you again. You too. Maybe I'll even remember your name next time. <laughs> Are you going to bring her next year? I hope to. I hope to be. Are you going to give this one to Yeah, I can. God bless you guys. <laughs> Have a great day. You too. So, thank you all for your support. It really means a lot. Um, and we shall come rejoicing when we bring in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Great job, boys.